Hello everybody, happy Monday, and welcome to Mr. B's Clothing here at 1995 Northwest 86th Street in gorgeous Clive, Iowa. Tim Sitzman joins me as always, and we, we found this bum off the street. Boy, I'm, One awesome now, and huh? Huh? I'm intimidated. I got two guys that know a heck of a lot about sports, and the only thing I know anything about is clothing. But it's fun to be with you guys. Well, the guy to the right, I'm not quite sure on that. <laughs> I just say, we'll say that for now. Not quite sure how much I actually know or how much I just you know throw against the wall. But nonetheless, it's good to be here, Tim, man. I walk in. And we've got like pink ties. We've got yeah purple ties. Everything's bright. It's springtime. You got a lot going on. You, you just you just hit the nail on the head. You know everything's about color. When when we switch to spring, it's just fun to see the color pop out. And we are full of color, full of exciting things here at uh, beautiful Clive, Iowa. As we always say, Chris, and invite you all, all you all you fanatics, come in and see us. We'd love to see you. It's nice to have Austin here. We. We love to have a, a guest host once in a while. He doesn't get here very often, but it's great. You know, I'm going to talk about a bridal show out at High V Hall out here in West Des Moines. We uh, our back room store, which we've shot a couple of them from the back room. Yep, sure. Have. We're excited to announce a, a four uh, suits. If you buy four suits for your wedding, ninety nine dollars a piece for the four suits. You get to keep them. You know, you don't have to rent anymore. You get to buy a black suit. You can wear it to the wedding and. It's a great idea for the grooms uh, and and the brides out there to think about. And uh, the backroom store is in Beaverdale. It's a 2601 Beaver. Uh, stop in and see Carol. Uh, if you don't know how to get to Beaver, stop in at Mr. B's. We'll show you the direction. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. And also, Bedowers. Can't forget about Bedowers. Uh, Bedowers got a lot of exciting things, too. Again, color is the, the word there, but a lot of uh, wonderful... Uh, Tight fitting, you know, if you're in good shape, but ours is a place to be. A lot of tight fitting clothes. Show I up. probably should just stay here. You, you, it's we're great a place for, where I need it's to be. Great, great, hours. great for Austin. He'd show off his muscles and stuff. That's and, right. It's and, peak uh, season. <laughs> it's wonderful. Hey, uh, let's talk a little spring football. The spring Fantastic. game is coming up. It's on Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, a couple topics I know uh, the Des Moines Register has written quite a bit about here. Um, the first guy I'd like to point out is Jeff Woody. At running back, he, from what I understand, he had four touchdowns in this past scrimmage on Saturday, which, you know, the coaches didn't really come out and say a whole lot about that after the scrimmage, but we've been able to compile the fact that that, that did, in fact, happen. Boy, I tell you what, Tim, he's a he's kind of a fan favorite. I know you're a big Jeff Woody fan, but it's good to hear those positive things with you, him. You know, he came off a great year, and I'll let Austin add in. He gets to watch him a little bit, but came off a great year, and he's certainly given a lot of that uh, third down kind of running back feel. He's that third down guy. You know, I think uh, as we look at the season coming ahead, you need that speed, and then you need Woody up for a, just a change of pace, and what a, what a running back he was last year, and I don't see anything changing as we go forward. Uh, should be terrific. He's a power back. He's a short yardage back. Do you see his role changing, though, at all? Is he evolves, you know, because in the past he's been fairly limited as to how they've right. used him. But I've heard Coach Rhodes really right. challenge him as far as his blocking goes. Talked about putting the two running backs back there quite a bit this year. What do, what do you think we'll right. see from it, him it, this year? The more Jeff can evolve as a fullback type blocker, the more he's going to play. Uh, he's a he's a great, like we all say, he's a great physical, talented runner, strong runner. And I, from seeing him now, he's even gotten bigger. I think, guys, and well, he's, he's, a, he's a low to take down. And, great. and getting him in open field, you know, seven, eight yards of pop is tough. Is, is great to come by. And when you see those four touchdowns in the spring practice. You're thinking, Jeff probably was pretty close to the red zone when he, you know, in the red zone, close to the goal line when he did that. So that's a good thing. It's yeah. a good thing to hear. Well, it, you know, it's also. I mean, he takes a lot of the beating away from uh, James White. It helps that's, save that's, his legs. That's, that's a great combo. It, yeah. When you're, you know, when you're going through a Big Twelve season, uh, those guys can get fatigue. That helps out. You got the two freshmen as well. But uh, you know, that's the situation at running back. I think another cause for not a concern, but it's always something you pay attention to at Iowa State is the defensive line. Yeah. And uh, a guy who you are kind of starting to hear has done better in the weight room. He's looked better on the field. Is Corey Morrissey, Austin, a, a Gilbert kid? He was. He's came in from junior college this year. What are you hearing on that, on that aspect? Um, just seeing him physically. I mean, being around you know earlier in spring ball, he physically looks the part. Um, you know, he's your he's your Patrick Neal esque defensive end, except he's bigger, so he brings size to it. He, he's like he's he's one of those guys like Pat Neal. He knows his assignment. He's always going to be kind of in the right place at the right time type of guy. And he just he the thing that I was you know seeing him on signing day and then seeing him you know a couple weeks ago slash now. The kid just he, he looks like Yancey McKnight's got his hands all over him. He looks like he looks the part. He looks good in that jersey, and you know he's getting kind of rocked up for a, a D end. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. How many how many positions we have to how many holes we got to fill in that defensive uh, line, Chris? Uh, you know, really the 
the defensive end spots, I would say, are both up for grabs, in my yeah, opinion. Just, crucial. I say this because Roosevelt Majid, I think, is yeah. penciled in as right. a starter, but he's coming off of an injury. You really don't know exactly what you're going to get from him. I did talk to him on Saturday, and he said things are going well. He's going to he's going to go start doing some team drills this week with that knee, so that, that's encouraging. Uh, David Irving is the really talented kid right. who played last year. He was the freshman. He's like six seven. Um, Good size. Great size. Great size. Yeah. Freakish athlete is what I've been told. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just kind of like he's got to. The mind's got to catch up. He hadn't played a lot of football in his life. Now, he's also penciled in as a starter. But, Austin, I mean, am, am I correct in saying I don't think either one of those guys are locked down to have those positions for no, next year? No, they're not. I mean, if, if one thing when you're watching David, his get off is still something to be desired. You know, he's got to be able to get off the ball more powerfully and with more speed. He looks the part. He's 6'7". I, I, make, a, I make a joke because I – I picked my fiance up from class the other day, and I was at Carver Hall, and I could see him all the way at the UDCC as big heads, <laughs> which is across, you know, it's across the street. It's but, a good sign. Yeah, but no, the, I think in Rosie too. Rosie still has, you know, his knee is still, you know, in those in between phases. I know what it's like going through a knee injury, and he, you know, hopefully by fall he will be ready to go. But like you said, those those two are not for sure locks. But it's good to know that they're playing. You know, David's playing well, and Rosie's coming along well in his rehab. Yeah, I think up the middle, it's it, it's pretty much a lock where you've got Jake McDonough and Clay on Lang from the sounds of things. Yeah. Right. So those guys have both bulked up. They yep. they're due, I think, for pretty good years. So right. hopefully, yeah. you know, the defensive line is something. We well, stay healthy. About. You know, you got to keep healthy in the middle. There. Exactly. And as far as as long as you have the depth, I mean, that's really what they're trying right. to build. I think they're focusing a lot more on two and three deep as opposed to who's going to start. Right. Because you have after those two, after McDonough and Lang, you have. Uh, guys like Walter Woods and Brandon Jensen who played some last year. You have uh, Henry Simon who played some last year. You have Pompey. Uh, Quentin Pompey who didn't play last year but is supposed to be uh, a pretty good player. So it's a good situation to be in for right. these guys. Tim, are you, uh, you going to come up to the spring game? Come well, on, yeah. I know you got to work, but yeah. you got to come up you with know, I don't. I don't want to miss the Fanatic fans that, that, that might come in after the spring game. You know, i got to be ready for them. But, uh, you know, I'd love, to, I'd love to be up there, but, I, you know, I think I'm going to let you, you guys tell me what happened so I can get all excited for uh, next uh, fall, which uh, we came off two consecutive really great years uh, under Coach Rhodes, and uh, you, know, you can't think that it's going to be anything different. Well, right? And we, I know the schedule looks tough. It's always going to be tough, always. and I, I think Coach Rhodes kind of, kind of likes that. You I know what, Tim? It's, uh, we're coming up that time of the year where we start doing Sitzman's picks. Absolutely, we're going to get months. we're going to get ready. You know, I didn't miss it much last year. You didn't. You I said didn't. you had seven wins and they had six. I know. I had seven and five last year, and uh, we'll we'll think about that. That schedule's tough again, but uh, it'll how, about, be how about the first Sitzman pick? Who wins the Iowa State spring game on Saturday? Iowa State or Iowa State? Uh, you know what? That's a tough call, but I'd I'd go with Iowa State <laughs> on that one. <laughs> that's that a, was that's one a lock. The, hey, you know, Austin knows that I take the easy picks. You know, <laughs> that's a lock. Right and there. this year is the type of hard hitting analysis that you get. Only at Cyclone Fanatic. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. But I do know something about the spring uh, wardrobe, so come in and see any of our staff. We'd love to help you. 1995 Northwest 86 here in Clive, Iowa, and it's great to have these two guys here. That's It's wonderful to be with you. I hope you had a great Easter out there. We did here, and uh, wish you the best. I well, wish you the best, too, Tim. Thanks Thank for you, everything Tim. here today. Uh, 1995 Northwest 86th Street in Clive. Uh, check it out. It's been scrolling at the bottom of your screen this entire time as well. Thanks for watching, everybody and we will for sure see you on Saturday at the spring game.